episode! I attend the 25th anniversary Pokemon exhibition. I accidentally did this to my sink. I'll share with you a few tips and tricks in streamlining your travel loadout. I'm sure to make many of you angry with my tier list of Pokemon mainline games. And lastly, I'll be doing my first game pairing. But first, give me that juicy intro. Yep, looks like another hot and sunny day in Thailand. Mind you saying that, this grass could use some water. And while I'm at it, perhaps a cut. It's getting a bit long, isn't it? It's long grass. Long grass. Long grass? Long grass? What the hell am I doing? Why am I here? Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Ah! I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> this was the opening day of the Pokemon 25th Anniversary Exhibition held in Central Festival Mall in Chiang Mai. We got to see lots of cards from lots of sets, artwork used for the card sets, and even got to see Pikachu. Jokes aside, it was an event filled with happy children and happy adults enjoying a nice day out, and that was actually really refreshing. You received a special promo starter pack just for attending, as well as a Pokemon Go promo card and three booster packs from some current sets. There was a lottery stand where you could trade in any one card, no matter how basic, and roll the lottery wheel to win cards from a display. Lena did both mine and her rolls, and she was really lucky. Afterwards, we managed to find a store selling the 25th anniversary packs, so we bought a bunch of those too. The cards being in tie isn't a real big deal for me, I just like the way they look. Anyway, it was a good event. I know Pokemon isn't everyone's cup of tea, but since it is the 25th anniversary of a franchise that I personally love, I thought it should get a mention in this episode. Oh, yeah, the, the sink. I bought ice cream. Yeah, we'll, we'll get onto that later. Travel can mean many things to many people. It could be your daily bus, car, or train commute to work. For some, travel is being isolated, out in the wilderness as far away from society as they can get. And for others, it's that long-awaited holiday or business trip. Each situation has different needs and constraints. People camping will usually be very conscious of the weight that they have to pack, and they will be only bringing the necessities. Anyway, as I've aged, I realise the importance of streamlining your setup. A comfortable travel is a happy travel. Since I'm a photographer, I have a lot of heavy equipment that I have to accommodate, and that heavily eats into my leftover space for gaming on the go. So I have to think about just how to get the most out of what I need to bring. Just look at this. Just look at this. Look at this. You can eat and you can drink at the same time, on the go, couldn't believe this existed. This isn't this isn't one of the tips, this is just me wanting to show off how cool this is. But first off, I'm going to talk about power. Every gaming device needs power, and each person's time away from a plug socket varies. Personally, for my use case, a 10,000 milliamp hour battery is more than enough for me. But power is where the first hurdle begins. Each device needs power, and if it's Ooh. something like the Nintendo Switch, it needs a power supply unit of its own. And that's not small. Ooh. So in the example of the Nintendo Switch, I found a good workaround. Certain types of USB-A to USB-C cables actually charge the Switch. So, this removes a need for a brick charger that might not even fit the plug socket in the country that you're going to, and means instead that you'll be charging directly from USB. This is also a really good move. It shrinks weight and physical space used down by quite a lot, and if your device has a USB equivalent charger, then you should definitely think about making the switch. I've just recently ordered some USB-A cables that should fit the 3DS, and if they work, this will mean I won't have to lug around the giant official charger anymore, and that saves me even more space and weight. 
Next up is the console itself. Alright, you can't physically make them smaller or lighter, and unless you buy a handheld gaming machine to replace another one, for example the Miu Mini, maybe you get one of those to replace a Game Boy Color or a Game Boy Advance. Side note, the Onion OS for the Miu Mini has just been upgraded to 3.5, link in the description below, and a big shout out to the team behind it, I know they've put in a lot of hard work, and it shows. So since you can't make the console smaller, then any pouch or case that you store it in needs to be as streamlined as possible possible. It's hard to beat this hard case for the Nintendo Switch by TomTok. It's built to conform to the shape of the Switch while providing rigid and firm protection to the unit. Things that are smaller, like the MiU, I've opted for a soft bag to hold the device and protect the screen from scratches when it's in my pocket. Light, effective and space conscious. You can buy a standard deck of cards case and also use that on the MiU since it's the exact same size. Okay, 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 let's have a sink break. So I'm ordering some ice cream, and the delivery arrives. I pull out the swanky silver bag, open it up, and pull out the tubs and put them in the freezer. I then realise the bag is full of ice. Not an issue, Thailand is a fan of giving you ice with absolutely everything, so I do what I normally do with excess ice, and I throw it into the sink. What I hadn't noticed was the warning label that I tore off in what can only be described as a sugar-induced feeding frenzy. Had I read the label, I would have realised oh no. that the pouch was stuffed full of dry ice, which I've oh, now thrown oh into no. a sink full of water. Um, now you know the tale of the foggy sink. Okay, let's get back on track. Finding the right bags for your situation is important, but nothing comes close to this last item. A universal power adapter. This is the single most important item in my opinion. I use it every day. Mine takes any plug, but also has three USB-A and a USB-C port, allowing me to charge five items at once from one plug socket. It has a smart fuse built in for added protection and a robust but small design. I can, and have, charged my phone, two switches, and a laptop all at once. In a world where power is king, making smart, small, and effective decisions on how to power your items will ultimately save you the most space. Like I said earlier, you can't shrink the consoles, but you can streamline the power systems. Going forwards, I'll always have one of these adapters on me, even in my home country, simply because having access to USB charging as well, all from just one plug, is just too good to pass up. Imagine sitting in a Costa Coffee or Starbucks, but there's only one plug for you, you need to charge a bunch of stuff. You can. It's fantastic. Do it. So, time for the tier list of Pokemon mainline games that literally nobody asked me for, but I'm gonna deliver it anyway. So, prepare yourself. And there it is, that's it, that's what you're getting. Game pairing. Okay, hear me out. We've established that travel means something different to everyone, so I'm gonna pair a game or games to a situation. In this episode, the situation is a short work or school commute, let's say around 30 minutes. A commute can be fairly chaotic, and playing games on such a commute is a good way to get some guaranteed gaming time in, but it comes at a cost. I used to commute in the borderline hellish London Underground, and that's a very challenging environment. Frequent station changes, crowded trains, and frequent things that need your attention such as line closure announcements mean you shouldn't be playing something intensive that'll take your concentration away. Or whatever you do play, it needs to be either fairly easy to pause or save. In my opinion, this first pick is probably the best for almost all commute lengths. Advance Wars Jewel Strike on the Nintendo DS. This is a game that shouldn't be overlooked. It and the rest of its series are fantastically well made, and if it's not the lengthy campaign you wish to play through, you can easily play skirmishes against the AIs, or if you're blessed with a commute that has a friend along, then you can even play multiplayer on one console, passing the console around at the start of each player's turn. Because of the game's turn-based system, there is no rush for you to react. This means if your opponent has taken a turn, but your commute requires you to leave, then you can just simply pause the game, by closing the DS on the original hardware, or by by pausing your emulator. If it's on your turn, however, you can just save mid-game and pick up where you left off. 
Advanced Wars 1 and 2 are perfectly fine substitutes also. The only reason I picked Dual Strike over the other two is because it has the most amount of content and feels like the most complete game in the series. Either way, throw a flight, bus, or even overnight train at it, and Advanced Wars laughs as it happily eats hours of your time as it slices open your skull and vomits serotonin across your brain. The music is decent, but not required, meaning you can play this on a low volume and pay attention to your surroundings. The visuals are incredibly stylized and iconic in their own right, which is largely my complaint against the Advanced Wars remake dropping on the Switch very soon. No, no. What have you done? Stop. Stop it. Oh, oh, oh there's nothing good about this. Oh, I hate it. Ah, what have you done? Ah, ah. But if turn-based strategy games aren't your thing, then I think an honourable mention should go to Pokemon Pinball, which is bizarrely both a great game and somehow avoided the secondary market price hikes. You can pick up a copy of the Game Boy Color Classic for fairly cheap, and the Rumble feature is just a nice pleasant add-on. While you might struggle to pause in time to save your ball if you're in a hurry, the stakes are relatively low, and the enjoyment is high, and I think that's a reasonable trade-off. It's a game that I've personally owned since release, still own in fact, and emulate on the Miu Mini often, which is how I discovered that the Miu Mini bizarrely has a rumble feature. Portable gaming should be adapted to your situations. Let me know in the comments section what you like to play in a tight time frame, or even on a commute. Okay, I've been rambling on a lot, sorry about that. Thank you very much for watching, and safe travels, friends. Oh, where are we? Well, this is the new fancy end screen. Oh. Do you, do you think anyone's watching still at this point? Unlikely.